Hello, family. Welcome back to the channel. I am TK Official. I am back with some more Shalee Tilson's case. Now, um, in this video, I just want to state that where the case is now, which is uh, in the GBI hands, all right, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, that's exactly where this case should be. Um, being because before it gets to GBI, Georgia's Bureau of Investigation, it's in hands of the police department, okay, in the last say so, it's the deputy, which is Deputy LeVette, okay, um, and then you begin to run into problems that's equivalent to the Kanika Jenkins case, being that the Stevens in Rosemont is connected to pretty much everything, right? And that's just a corporate um, investigation. Now, to get it, to make it civil, then we then push it to either um, general attorneys or Georgia's Bureau of Investigation. So it's exactly in the route where it needs to be going. That's one. Uh, two, we have to start ho holding these officers accountable, okay? Um, we have to be able to find probable cause in this case. Um, and here's the thing. Um, you know, I don't know if it was men or women involved, uh, officers of the law that was involved in this case, but we need to be able to hold them accountable by, hey, at least putting them in front of a jury and letting uh, the case play out in a trial. Okay, um, us as a people deserve that. So that's important. Um, I also want to pull up an article. All right, um, it's in the Hip Hop Inquiry or whatever, Inquirer. And it kind of briefly tells us um, about his day, okay, the day he got arrested. Now it reads, a Providence, Rhode Island's man who traveled to Kenyours, Georgia to look after his father that had suffered, suffered from a stroke was found dead inside a Rockdale County, Georgia jail. The family of Charlie Tilson, an inspiring business owner, and pre-law student believes that their loved one was murdered inside of a Rockdale County, Georgia jail and also believe that they are now trying to cover up his death. According to the family of Mr. Tilson, it all begun when he decided to pay one of his, one of his siblings an early morning visit on March 3rd. Mr. Tilson left his parents' home at approximately 5 a.m. to walk the short distance to his sister's home but was stopped by the police along the way. The Conyers Police Department alleged that they received a 911 call that a man fitting Mr. Tilson's description was seen kicking on a door in the neighborhood where the family once resided. According to a police report obtained by Hip Hop Inquirer, cops alleged that Mr. Tilson became combated when they approached him and even slipped out of his handcuffs, which was doubles, double locked when they placed him in their police cruiser. Um, here is a complete verbiage from the arresting police report obtained by Hip Hop Inquirer. All right, so they obtained a police report, um, specifically um, from this police department, and it reads on Saturday, March 3rd, at about 5:18 hours, all uh, 518 hours, I responded to 1216 Lakeview Drive in reference to a male subject attempting to kick the door open at the location. Upon arrival, I was met at the roadway by a black male later identified as Shalee Telson, uh, wearing a camouflage jacket, black pants, and red shoes. Telson was yelling, fuck you. We kicking uh, the door in, as well as several other profanities. He also advised the female he was walking with had cocaine in her possession. Uh, he, he rambled on and on and was pacing back and forth as he yelled. Officer Eaton was on the scene with me. Our corporal... Harwick arrived shortly after we did. Now, uh, the issue that I'm finding with this article, or I'm sorry, this paragraph in specific, is that um, they couldn't control him from the beginning. Alleged. Okay, after attempting to calm him down for several minutes, it was apparent Tilson was not going to comply. I advised him uh, he was under arrest and to put his hands behind his back. I took control of his left hand and Eaton took control of his right. He began to resist and we ended up on the ground struggling to handcuff him. I was eventually able to apply the handcuff to the rear of his per person. The cuff was checked for fit and then it was double locked by Eaton. Tilson was cleared 
of any weapons or contraband, then relocated to my patrol vehicle, cleared of any weapons or contraband prior to the start of my shifts while attempting to secure him in the rear seat until he continued to resist arrest. Uh, Corporal Hartwick attempted to take control of the handcuffs and attempt to guide him in the vehicle. He pulled away and the cuffs slipped off his wrist. And he was eventually able to uh, reapply the cuffs. Telson was secure in the rear seat. Um, now, while this investigation is going on, it's very important for them to have some type of dash cam or cop cam. Um, uh, because these accusations of them saying that the cuffs slipped um, for a person that's they're, they're claiming to be combative from the beginning, uh, they're going to put them, them things on super tight, you know what I'm saying? And slipping off. Mm. So I'm gonna need a, you know, I'm gonna want a cop cam video or a dash cam. Um, so moving forward, Tilson was transported to Rockdale County Jail. While en route to the jail, I advised communications to make Rockdale staff aware of the extreme disruptive nature of Tilson and his tendency towards resisting arrest. Upon arrival, I was met by deputies who were able to remove him from a vehicle and transport chair. He was turned over to the jail, jail staff. Uh, once he didn't return home, the family became frantic as they should, okay, frantic. According to the family members of Mr. Tilson, when he didn't return home that day, the family became alarmed and started calling around to try to locate him. Once they discovered Mr. Tilson was locked up in Rockdale County Jail, they were told that he could not receive any visitors because he was placed in solitary confinement but wasn't told the reason. The family tells us that, and I'm gonna stop there, I'm going to be Googling the law inside the, the Rockdale County Jail uh, of its, uh, as far as visitation and how that goes, okay? Uh, the family tells us that they made several trips to the jail only to be turned away, but on March 13th, they were notified by sheriff employees that Mr. Tilson was dead and that his body was sent to Georgia Bureau of Investigation. Uh, and now, um, this case was sent to the Georgia Bureau of Investigations pretty quick. And I'm going to assume because um, the young man has transitioned, okay, in the matter. He wasn't just injured or anything like that. He had transitioned. Okay. Uh, when the family went to GBI, they asked could they view his body and was denied that request as well. <clears throat> Uh, that's another law that I want to look into. Why was the family denied uh, the request to see his body? Um, now, after Tanisha Tilson threatened to contact the media, she wasn't offered to view a photo of Shelly Tilson. In a disturbing video, the mother described to us exactly what the photo looked like, which horrified the entire family that was present at the GBI headquarters. Wow. And my condolences to the family. Okay. We spoke ex exclusively with an eyewitness who stated that he saw a jail detention officer weighing about 240 uh, to 250 pounds in the head and then watching other detention officers carrying Shelly Telson from his cell by his hands and feet. And then the next day learned that he was dead. According to the witness, several other inmates complained about what they saw to the person, prison officials, but were told they were making things up and he wasn't dead. Um, so, in that moment, they falsified information. So, jo Georgia Bureau of Investigation released a pre preliminary cause of death on May 14th to tell some family along with civil rights attorney. Uh, because it is a civil rights case, uh, Mr. Davis had a scheduled meeting with officials of GBI to discuss what their initial findings were. According to the sources who attended the meeting, Mr. Tilson died of dehydration which was a result of blood clots. The family believes Shalee Tilson died as a result of physical abuse and had very little uh, confidence in an investigation by the police who are investigating other police. Um, and, and in this day, day and age, that kind of thing shouldn't be going on. As I stated at the beginning of this video, either the case goes to uh, gen the general attorney and or uh, Georgia Bureau investigation. And now, uh, another thing that I want to touch on is that if the family was denied um, to visibly see their family member um, after finding out that he had transitioned, um, that is 
another red sign for me as to why they were denied uh, the rights, their rights to see um, his body. And that's why they're alleging physical abuse. Okay. So that's what I got here. Um, <clears throat> and again, it's just a breakdown of uh, <clears throat> what went on that that day. And that's just uh, the breakdown of the cop, um, uh, the officers who uh, picked him up that day. And so, um, I'll be coming at you guys with more, a lot more of this case, um, in hopes of finding some type of accountability, um, and finding justice for this young man. Um, thank you guys for coming and watching the video until next time in a minute family.